Hmm, good a Tragic here, and welcome back to Pathfinder, the Godless Ones. And, uh, yeah, so, there's a lot to do here. We're going to get straight into it. Um, I've decided I'm going to pretty much redesign this mod. There's a huge amount of errors. I just can't get this die roller to work the way I want it to. It's uh, causing all sorts of grief. So, I need to basically rebuild it from scratch rather than sort of cobbling it together because remember this is like for sort of like a rebuild of my very first mod and there's just little things like for example uh, all the all the cards are, are one to one to one scale which means they pop up small so you need to scale them to about uh, two to have them large so if i see this one how it's a bigger card if i pop over it it's always huge so the whole mod needs to be scaled up and I want to make these things larger these locations because sometimes it's hard to look at the you know look at the I want them to be about the size of these cards lots of little things but mainly I need to redo the the uh, the die roller and the player board buttons and so after it's instead of like doing it and then adjusting this file I'm just going to finish this game as is and then have the next update into the next scenario. So let's get straight into this now. Uh, we are missing a few blessings, by the way. So let's go, what do we got? 9, 10, 11, 12. So now we're up to date on the blessings. I need to put a, a blessing announcement, some kind of thing that lets me see. Let's put the chat log on as well. So you can see my roles, because some people were complaining about not being able to see the roles. Uh, yeah, so what I'm going to be doing is... I've kind of forgotten what I was saying. Yeah, so I'm going to finish this scenario, and then I will be uh, doing pretty major changes to this mod. So let's get straight into it, starting with... Al Alian or Alan as I like to call him and Yablamo. Oh gee. It's the it's the boss boss fella. Right. Safini, the evil demonologist. Okay, so the whole point of the game is to kill this person, but it's actually quite a complicated way you gotta do it. For starters, no matter what we do, the villain can escape. And it can escape to any open location. Now we've closed two locations. And we fail to close it, close this one. That's why this deck is upside down because I know there's no henchman in it. But that means he can, she can escape to there definitely. But there's also this thing where before we can act, we can t we can temporarily close these uh, locations. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to close as many as possible so we know exactly where she flees to. So we start with crow. Crows a ability is simply to banish a weapon so we just banish the long spear that's closed okay slanesha's one she's orange she has oh, no we don't draw a card she has to summon and acquire a random weapon so yoink let's hope it's a good weapon oh sword breaker Nice. 1d4 minus 1. That's pretty weird. It's actually not that cool, is it? Discard this card to evade a monster you encounter with a higher difficulty to defeat is less than 11 plus the scenario's adventure deck number. Interesting. So it's actually not good for fighting people, but it's got an evade. I might give that to one of the uh, weaker characters. Anyway, the point is a strength melee 9. We should be able to get this because we have an 8 plus 3. So that's eight, one, two, three. That means we need to roll a seven off an eight die to actually do this. That's actually quite hard. We've got one blessing available to us. Why has he only got three cards? I guess he must have used a blessing last turn. So, well, I guess we're just going to risk it. We can't really do anything about that. Yablamo, come on seven. 
Ugh. So close. We get nine. Oh! Actually, we only need to even it, don't we? We rolled a nine. We got a nine. We get it. And that means we also can draw a card because of the location ability. So that one's closed. Next is Valathor or whatever his name is. What's his? He has to just beat uh, combat, right? I'm going to make these cards, these location cards, scaled larger so they're easier to look at. Yeah, so it's just a difficulty nine. So it, it does say twice the scenario's adventure deck number, but we've got to remember that we're playing scenario B, so it has no number. Okay, so this is a combat check, which means we can use uh, this guy's ability. So we know the deal here. So it's a D6 by itself for his strength. And then we discard an item to our top of our deck. That gives us a D12 plus two, which is our, a D10, bigger pardon, plus two, which is our charisma die. And we only need a nine. So basically from a D10 and a D6, which can max roll a 16, we're trying to roll a seven. So we've got basically pretty close to a 50-50 chance. I'm going to risk it. We only need a nine. Come on, let's do it. Oh, beautiful. 13, that's pass. Now we've got two people at this location. So I don't think we can both do it, but if I look at the thing, all we have to do is acquire a boon and it's plus one to the acquisition. But we have a Nora who has this amazing ability that allows us to use our knowledge spill, uh, our knowledge skill to attain uh, spells. And her knowledge is crazy. It's like D12 plus three, it's like super high. So we are going to grab a spell. And all we need is a four. <laughs> so we should definitely do this. Basically, we need to roll a one to win. So let's just put this in my hand. Yoink. So there's that. So that one is closed as well. So we closed everyone we were at. We didn't miss any of the closings, which is really awesome. That means the only one that is open is the Sanctum and the actual Forsaken Cloister itself. Okay, so now we want to follow the rest of the card. Before you act, summon and encounter a random monster from the box. If the summon monster is not defeated, neither is she. So let's do that, you boink. Uh, monsters, yoink. And it is a giant cockroach. Before you act, another character at your location summons and encounters the cockroach. Well, there are no other characters. If the check to defeat has a bludgeoning trait, add a 1d8. Okay. And pick merely piercing. <laughs> it's a real shame. It looks like it's got bludgeoning. Why don't we just use the, the big hammer side? Oh, well. Okay, so we only need an 8 to beat this. So we are rolling a d6. Oh, no, not a d6. We're rolling a d10 plus 2 plus a d6. Now, this is a very badly worded uh, card, like a lot of the cards in Pathfinder. Basically, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a section of the card text at the very end that says, if any d6 rolled on this check is a six, counted as a seven. Okay? Now, the wording is ambiguous because that could mean it's on any time you use the check, or it may mean that you have to do the discard ability because it says, you know, use your strength melee skill plus a D6. You may additionally discard this card to add another one D6. If any D6 rolled on this check is six, count it as seven. So I'm not quite sure how that goes. It really should have, it, it's just not very clear. So I'm gonna, I'm playing that the that's a constant that's because of the full stop. I'm thinking that it's a completely separate phrase, a completely separate clause, so to speak. So I'm going to count that as always active when I play this card, heavy pick. So anyway, the point is we are rolling 
Uh, we only need an eight, so I think. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. So we get a 15. That is a win. So that guy is defeated. And now we actually fight her. So Arcane 9, her, he doesn't have Arcane. But we need a 12 now to win. So basically we're rolling the same thing, except I think this time I'm actually going to discard the pick and add a D6. And I will get her to play her Blessing, which will add another D6. Because I want to nail this. Yeah, blammo. 22, so that's a pass. And we actually, we didn't actually advance the blessing deck either. <laughs> okay, so we beat her. Now, even though we beat her, right? Because we beat her, we can close this location. So, yonk, get rid of that. Yonk, this location is closed. But you don't have the permanent, you don't have the when closing effect doesn't happen or anything like that. So we've closed that location and there's only one other location around. So we don't have to draw any other cards or pull things out of the blessing decks or whatever. She just gets shuffled in here. We know exactly where she is. And uh, it's a real shame I did that because I wanted to, I think it was Arcane to kill her, which I think Elnor is our best Arcane. She's D12 plus one. Yeah, so she's the one who's going to go fight her now. So that was a pretty good first round. So let's uh, discard all that and draw to four. And now it is Crow's turn. We're going to leave Crow where he is because uh, we want to be able to temporarily close those locations if we find her again. Okay, Magic Pad, Constitution Fortitude. That's a D6 plus two. Your blammo. We only need a four here. Fail. Oh wait, three plus two is five. Yep, that's a win. Now we don't have anything else going on here, but I don't want to banish his iconic hero weapon to cl temporarily close this location, which requires banishing a weapon. So what I'm actually gonna do I'm going to discard all of these. Yoink. And draw up to four. One, two, three. And hopefully we'll get another weapon. Beautiful. Because he has so many weapons. He's got like five weapons. It's a real shame I didn't keep the, keep the armor. But oh well, I didn't. Okay, now we didn't advance the blessing deck. Advance the next blessing. Yoink. This is a short bow, dexterity three. No, we don't give a toss about that. We can't really get that. Oh, it's actually a dexterity three. We can roll a d4. So let's roll the d4. We get a four, beautiful. And now we have to discard down to a hand side of four. So we're gonna go one, two, three, and then I'll draw one. Okay. Balazar, yoink. Okay, so he has a flaming pick. This is a nice pick, it's a D6 plus one. It's actually pretty cool. I think the plus ones are really strong. You know, like if we give the pick, say, to this guy, right? So if we give the, the pick to this guy, he's gonna have a D10 plus three instead of a D10 plus two. That's huge. So we wanna get this. Now it is a strength test, and this guy here, it works on strength tests, not just on combats. So we can do this. So we discard this to the top of our deck. 
that gives us the d6 plus the d12 plus 2. I'm also going to discard Glibness and grab a monster and play it to give me a d4 as well. And your Bama, we need 12. Uh, we rolled a d12 when we should have been rolling a d. I oh, know we did roll a d12. So we got 10, which means we failed. That was a lot of resources. Okay, well, so much for that. Uh, let me just quickly look at my discard pile here. Add to Charisma check, Enchanted Fang. Okay, so I'm going to do recharge this, uh, discard this card to explore your location. The difficulty of the diplomacy checks are reduced by two, so may as well, I guess. Conscript a snake, we need an 11. So once again, we'll go put that on the top. That'll give us a D6 plus a D12 plus two. Unfortunately, we can't pump it up any higher than that. Oh, I rolled a 12 and it disappeared. So we got a 10, we needed 11, which means we've got one point of damage. So that's discarded as well. Uh, what was that called? A, a snake. If undefeated, bury the top card of your deck and return it to the top of the location deck. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wow, we've got one card left. That's not good. <laughs> Okay, that didn't go too well. I was getting a bit cocky. So he's going to come over. She's going to come over here. And advance that blessing deck. I didn't advance for blue, so I'll advance that as well. And your blamo. The blasphemous priest is immune to mental and poison. If the check to defeat has a divine trait, the difficulty is increased by 2d4. Okay, so this has mental, this has fire, this has lightning. So I'm going to do lightning because I believe this guy's immune to electricity. Yeah, so I'm going to do lightning. So that is a 12, 1 plus 2d, 2d4s. Okay, we need 10. Come on. Oh, well, we are rolling absolutely terrible today. Uh, I can recharge this if I beat an arcane six. Okay, so that's a pass. And now I need to do a damage. Uh, I think I'm going to get rid of the pit. That's my damage. And that's the only other thing. So this guy now gets picked up and shuffled back in. Terrible. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. And finally, let's advance that blessing. Yoink. Oh, God, another one of these things. These things are. I don't even know what these things are. They're weird little monsters. Maybe they'll come in handy later on. Four. So that gets shuffled into your deck. 
and we can discard the librarian to get the next one. Ah, oh, excellent. So we can close this. This is good. Uh, hopefully. So the first thing you do, start is it's not the first explore, so we don't take a damage. Then we spurn the servitor. And we do a divine check. Our divine is actually a D12 plus two. So hopefully we can actually pass this. This will make our life a lot easier. Come on. Nope. So we need 11 to kill him. Put out the sickle. That gives us two D6s. Wow, that's not much, is it? Okay, we'll spend a blessing. Give you another D6. Gives us a nine. What is that all? I didn't think that through. Why am I only rolling sixes? Strength is six. Sickle is five. Sickle is a melee skill plus one d6. And then I spent, that's three sixes. Oh. Okay, so that's a failure. We get nine, 10, 11, we take two damage. We can recharge this. And now we can't beat her, but we still have to fight her to calculate her damage to us. So I'm going to basically do the same roll, but that'll discard the sickle. Okay, and that's 11. Where was that roll five seconds ago? So we get no damage, but she is shuffled back into here. Okay. So that was a pretty bad opening hand. Uh, what is this to five? One, two, three, four, five. Dear in me, didn't do too well that turn. So I think what the plan is, how did it, I've just got to acquire a burn. So I think the plan is now to send this guy to here. She'll go over to here and heal him. And he sometimes somehow needs to do a turn without having to draw more than two cards. And we only have two rounds to go to win. So it's not good at all. Oh man. Okay, well that's that. I will see you guys next time. Uh, during the editing, I found a couple of the errors. For starters, the snake thing said to bury not discard, so that card got buried. Also, when we were fighting that monster, we only discarded one damage, but we actually got hit for four damage. So I am also gonna discard one, two, three, more. And then I got draw another one, two, three. And additionally, I also drew one too many cards. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So they're the ones that I caught. Now we have 12 cards. So we've got two more rounds to complete this game. It's going to be close, but it's always close in this game. It's always right down to the wire. We've got 11 cards to get through here. It seems like a lot, but... We're going to be having more than one person fighting in that zone. So hopefully we'll be able to close another location, at least one, preferably two next turn. And then we can have like two or three characters even here to dig her out in a single round. So it's going to be very, very close. We had a horrendous turn that turn. We had, it started off really well. We found the 
the villain and then we you know sent her to a place so we, without anything and getting at it so we know exactly where she is but then we we got uh we we missed some really simple roles so we didn't get to close we didn't get to close two locations i think it was and that was very bad oh how annoying okay that's it i'll see you guys next time <laughs>